Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support the 21st Century Air Act, a comprehensive act to reauthorize the FAA and reform air traffic control. Our aviation system was once the best in the world, but unfortunately, America is no longer first in flight. Ask anyone who flies. They know our aviation system is plagued with inefficiencies. These range from indirect routes that route us all over trying to get from one point to another, seemingly endless delays, and time wasted on the tarmac hoping to take off to head to your destination. These delays and congestion cost travelers and our economy an estimated $25 billion a year. You may have heard arguments that, well, there's nothing we can do. 50% of our air traffic delays are caused by bad weather. Well, underlying that is 50% of our delays are caused by bad weather because they have to space out aircraft further and differently when the weather's inclement. Why is that? Well, in many cases, we're using World War II radar technology to keep track of modern aviation. In fact, over 400 air traffic control facilities were built before the invention of the Internet, and nine of them are old enough to collect Medicare if they're a if they're live human being. Think about them. They're that, they're that old. Questions have asked, well, why haven't we simply fixed the problem? After all, taxpayers and passengers have poured billions of dollars into the FAA to modernize that system over the last 30 years. Yet we have little to show for it. As President Clinton pointed out nearly 20 years ago, part of the problem is our outdated technology, but a more fundamental problem is how the FAA operates. And I couldn't agree more. We recently had a hearing regarding air traffic control, and the FAA was asked, what does it take to get to a modern air traffic control system like is used in other parts of the developed world? I was told, well, if we had 10 more years and $30 billion more, we'd hope to have the project done. I come from private business. Hope is not a plan. The 21st Century Air Act would replace a federal entity that has proven itself to be ineffective with an independent, not-for-profit board tasked with modernizing our air traffic control system. They would have one duty, providing the safest, most efficient air traffic control service to all users. Contrary to critics, our board will be balanced. It will be comprised of users of the system. All are represented equally. Let me bust a few myths here real quickly. Critics argue that transferring air traffic control service from the FAA to a new entity would be a free giveaway of federal assets. Well, first, let me state they're not federal assets. They're our assets. We paid for them. Everyone in this chamber has paid for them. Every taxpayer that's flown has paid for them. They're owned by the people. Most of these assets are so old and outdated that in many cases they're actually a liability. There are many facilities that are actually environmental brownfields. A number, many of the FAA facilities no longer meet OSHA standards. Yet somehow, some of the critics claim that these are valuable federal assets. In fact, users are going to pay for this air traffic control system to update it. They're going to pay for the equipment, the staff, and technology to finally update a system that we've been trying to do for over 30 years. Many in this chamber talk about refocusing the federal government, reducing it back to its core missions, reducing the government back to what it does best. This bill does just that. Mr. Speaker, after billions of dollars and decades of federal bureaucrats' fruitless efforts to modernize our air traffic system, it's time for change. It's time for real reform. Mr. Speaker, this bill does exactly that. Let's bring the bill to the floor. Let's get, achieve real reform rather than just talking about it. I yield back.